Hi there, I'm Julie Davis for Blick Art Materials. Pulp painting, if you've ever experienced it, is a method of hand forming a sheet of paper into a design or a piece of artwork. There are many techniques that can be used, but basically they require torn up sheets of paper, a blender, some water, you make a paper slush, and you put it on a screen to dry. The artwork is the paper, and the paper is within the artwork. But today I'm going to show you a process that doesn't require a blender, doesn't require a screen, it doesn't even require any adhesive. There's a lot less mess, a lot less time involved, and it's so easy that you can even do it with kindergartners. Sound intriguing? Take a look at this piece. This is a pulp painting of a leaf. You can see how colorful and textural it is. And the ingredients? Tissue paper and water. We're going to start out with Blick tissue paper. This comes in 20 different colors, and this is the non-bleeding tissue paper. Something that's very important for this project because it's going to get wet. You don't want to use bleeding tissue paper. You also don't want to use a coated tissue paper. We're going to use a piece of canvas instead of a screen. This is Frederick Style 568. It's available on a roll so that you can cut it down into just about any size that you want it to be. It's an economy grade canvas, so it has a real relatively open weave, which is going to be perfect for this project because we're going to need to have water uh, drained through this canvas. And the pieces can be reused afterwards. I'm going to put my piece on a corrugated cardboard sheet. This is going to help drain some of the water away from it. It's also going to make it easier to move my artwork around as I'm creating it. Now as you see, I've already created a sketch on the canvas. Use a number 2B pencil. Don't use a pen or a marker of any sort because it will bleed back up into your artwork. So just use a plain old number two pencil. And as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and use some masking tape and tape my canvas to the corrugated cardboard. This will just help the canvas to lay flat and it will make it stay put so it doesn't move around while I'm creating the pulp painting. All right, now I'm ready to create the pulp. Let's take a bowl and some of the tissue paper, which I've already torn into smaller pieces, more manageable. Then I'm going to tear those into small pieces like this and add a little bit of water. You don't need a whole lot, just enough to wet it really. Mix it up so it's all soaked and then start tearing that apart into even smaller pieces. You're pulverizing this tissue paper. When you can't tear it anymore, you have a small pulpy clump here. Bring that over to your sketch and press it down where you want it to go. Now the first few pieces that you put down are not going to want to stay very well. It needs the weight of more pulp around it yet, but that one's staying pretty well. Let me show you another technique to create a little bit of shading. We'll grab another piece of the light green tissue paper, and then we're going to use a darker of green tissue paper and mix it right into the pulp with the lighter color. A little more water is required. You'll notice that the water doesn't pick up any of the color from the tissue paper itself. We'll create our pulp there and I'm going to put it down here towards the bottom of the pear. Another cool thing about this is you can actually form the pulp as you're putting it down into the exact shape that you want it to be. 
so I can get the nice rounded bottom of that pear as well as the line where it comes in contact with the bowl. Work one section at a time so that the pieces overlap each other. Every now and then, take a paper towel and blot the pulp pieces. This does a couple of things. It removes some of the water, which will speed up the dry time. And of course, it flattens the pieces out and pushes them together more. What's happening as this is drying is the fibers of the tissue paper, the tiny little fibers, are bonding together, intertwining and interlocking with one another again. So once it's dry, they're going to stick together to form a single sheet. However, if you need to work this project in more than one session, dry pieces will not rebond to wet pieces. So if that's the case, what you need to do is take a little bit of Elmer's glue, just put it on the dry area, and then press the wet pulp down into it to get it to bond to itself again, and keep working. Now dry time will depend on your rate of evaporation, of course, humidity levels. Um, you can speed it up a little bit by placing a fan, gently blowing on it, putting it in a sunny location. You can even run a cool hair dryer just gently over the top of it to speed things up. I have a piece here that's already dry. As you can see, it's all together in one piece. Turn it around and let's look at the back side. You has picked up a little bit of the canvas texture, which actually I've done a number of these where I prefer the back side to the front side. It's still very delicate, and I could tear this very easily if I tried. So I recommend that you seal it um, before you put it on display. And here's a couple ways that you can seal it. I like the matte finish of the tissue paper myself, so what I would do is I would brush a couple of coats of a matte medium, such as the Liquitex matte medium, over the top of it. Let it dry in between coats, of course. You could also put the sealant on the back side. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the front side. If you would prefer a glossy finish to it, such as this piece that I have here, you could use a polymer gloss medium, or you could even take Elmer's glue again and cover the surface with Elmer's glue, brush it on, both of those mediums will look white when you apply them, but they will dry clear. All right, let's discuss a couple of display options. I like to see it mounted on a board like this. Of course, as in our example here, you could just leave that rough sheet like this. You could make small pieces and turn them into jewelry. I have a piece back here behind me that I'd love to show you. There's a large piece in, that was created here in the front with a window opening so that a smaller piece could be displayed behind it. So it was created in layers. Use of negative space can be so important in this project right here. This also has that nice gloss coating to it. Now, if you're working with more advanced students, and you find the color palette, perhaps, of tissue paper to be limiting, I do have another option that I would like to show you right now. You can create just about any tint or any hue of any color on a piece of tissue paper. I have an example up here of a portrait that was created with the same process. But if you look, you can see there's very subtle shades into the flesh tones here and into the hairline. Okay, let me show you how I created those. Take a permanent marker. I use the Blick Studio Artists markers. These come in a range of 96 different shades. So I can achieve just about any color that I would want to achieve. I have a piece of white tissue paper here. You could do this right on top of any color of tissue paper as well. Just apply strokes of a color. Now allow that to dry and then tear it up and create your pulp in the same way that I just showed you. And this will give you kind of a very nice light beige color. Okay. Well, 
that is it for the No Blender pulp painting. Now there's a very short materials list available on our website, as well as the National Standards for Visual Arts Education. You teachers will find that interesting. I really hope you'll enjoy this. I encourage you to try it. It's a lot of fun.